Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So it's Thursday, which means it is time for our weekly redraft. And we have done from 2020 all the way down to 2016 as of right now, which means it is time for the granddaddy of them all, the 2015 draft, which is widely regarded as the best draft of the last 15 and now even 20 years. Now that we have the 2023 draft, it is regarded as the best draft of the last 20 years since at least 2003 at the bare minimum. And you can make the argument it's better than that. When looking at this draft, look at the honorable mention guys that I have to go through Timo Meyer, Travis Konechny, Dylan Schrome, Joel Erickson, Thomas Shabbat, uh, Vince Dunn, Aiden Hill, uh, Montembeau, Provorov, Hannafin, Anderson, Terry Besser. That's the honorable mention. That is the honorable mention. Once we get to like 2016, most a lot of those guys would have been in the eight through 10 spots, 2014, 13. Those guys would all be cracking it. They don't crack it on this redraft. And when looking at the OG top 10, it went McDavid, Eichel, Shrom, Marner, Hannafin, Provorov, Orensky, Meyer, Rantanen. So the top 10 is also off the charts. Your biggest bust, I guess, is like Pavel Zaka or Ivan Provorov, who have had pretty solid careers that are going to be in the NHL for at least another like five years. They're going to have 12, 13 year careers. So this draft is just truly off the charts. So without further ado, let's dive into it. First up at 10th overall, it was Miko Ranton into the Colorado Avalanche. I have them now taking Zach Rowenski instead of getting their franchise winger to play with Nathan McKinnon, because obviously they wouldn't take Kelma Carr until 2017. I have them taking Zach Rowenski and getting their franchise defenseman now. And we're looking at Zach Rowenski didn't play right out of the gate at the NHL level. I believe he went to Michigan, but the season after in his draft year, plus two, he walked into the NHL having 47 points in 78 games was a Norris was a Calder finals. was a Calder finals, not a Norris finals, but he did get, but he did get Norris votes. I believe he got two Norris votes. He was great right out of the rip. And basically beyond that, he has been in number one defenseman in Columbus and especially the last three or four years, although he has had some trouble in staying healthy when he is healthy. In my opinion, he's probably a top 15 defenseman in the entire NHL and a solid around 60 point guy on a Columbus team. He's been putting up at a high rate on a Columbus team that is not that talented. If Columbus gets good, I think people will really appreciate how good this guy is. I can see you making the argument for another guy here just because he has been injured a decent amount, but the fact he was a high impact 47 point guy at 19 years old, I think that does help. And he has been relatively healthy this year. He's missed only 10 games. I hopefully plays 70, 72 games this year. I think he is the pick at number 10 when looking at the Colorado Avalanche, Wierenski, Landis Cog, and McKinnon, rest of the way. At number nine, number nine, the Sharks initially took Timo Meyer. Obviously, after such a down year this year, I couldn't really put Timo Meyer, but I have them taking Root Bay Hints. They get another forward here. And Root Bay Hints did take a while to develop. Even at 23 years old, he was still having 33 points in 61 games. But the next season, he was point per game. And basically, since then, he has been a around 40 and 40 pace guy, one of the best centers in the entire league. Not one of the best, but like a t he's been a top 15 center for the most part for the last three or four seasons on one of the best lines in hockey. So although it did take a little bit longer to develop, I think at this point, he's a top 35, top 30 player in the entire NHL, and he's still only, what, 26 years old? And I think he's going to stay that for the next around five seasons. So although he maybe wasn't as much of an impact player from day one as a Brock Besser, as a, I'm trying to think of some people, even a Zach Rowenski at number 10, I think considering how good he is right now and how established he he is the last three or four seasons. I think the San Jose Sharks go here and get their center of the future past when everybody else at this point in 2015, they were still a highly competitive team. Get that center of the future for one day through their rebuild or whatever, or maybe they would end up trading him like Timo Meyer. But regardless, he is the guy that ends up going here at number eight, at, no, at number nine. At number eight, Zach Rowenski initially went to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now I have them taking Matt Barzell, unlike a Rupe Hintz. Although I think maybe Rupe Hintz is better right now. Matt Barzell off the rip was an 85 point guy at 20 years old in that 27, 21 or 20 or 21. But at that 2017, 2018 season, right out of the gate, 85 point guy for the next four or five seasons. He was around 65, 70 point pace was the number one center on back to back Eastern conference or final four in the 2021 season. However you want to put it basically back to back Eastern conference finals. He led his team to that by being the best offensive player, just such a fantastic skater. One of the best 
guys in the offensive zone in terms of possessing the puck. The shot maybe isn't as elite as Arupe hints, but he's just such a good playmaker, and that's on full display right now. He hadn't been able to crack 80 points since that rookie year. Right now, he has 56 points in 52 games. There's a chance that he could potentially sniff 90 points. I said before the season, he was going for at least 85, and it looks like it's, it looks like it's going to happen. And with the Columbus Blue Jackets... We would have had a Barzell and Panarin in 2018-2019. We'd have Barzell and Panarin on the same team. So I think when looking at Columbus, they just would have went with best player available at that stage. They were still a competitive team. So I think they end up going with a Matt Barzell and getting their franchise their franchise center. At number seven, Ivan Provorov initially went to the Philadelphia Flyers. I have them taking Kyle Connor. Similarly to Matt Barzell, although he, they both debuted full-time in the same year, as, although he wasn't as good as Matt Barzell, in his rookie year, he had 31 goals, 26 assists, 57 points in 75 games for the Winnipeg Jets right out of the gate at 21, 2021. He was an elite player. Then two years later, 35 goals, 38 goals, 35 assists for 73 points in 71 games before the COVID shutdown. Basically, for the last three or four seasons, he has been one of the better goal scoring wingers in the entire in the entire league. Yes, he maybe doesn't have the defense of a Matt Barzell, but I think the fact that he can put up near 45, 50 goal pace does kind of make up for that defense. He is just such a good goal scoring winger. And we look at the Philadelphia Flyers, him playing with the Claude Giroux from 2017 into 2021, 2022. Maybe they're still competitive compared to an Ivan Provorov that just kind of plateaued after his first season. Maybe the Philadelphia Flyers franchise ends up in a different spot in that late 2010s, early 2020s, if they have a young superstar like a Kyle Connor. So I went with them. At number six, the Devils initially took Pavel Zaka. I have them taking Jack Eichel. Jack Eichel was initially the second overall pick, obviously, in this draft, and he had a pretty immediate impact. He had 56 points, and then by like two seasons from then, he was basically a point-per-game guy, one of the best young centers in the entire NHL, and especially before that COVID season, he had like 30... He had like 37 goals in like 60 games. Like before, like it looked like he was fully breaking out, but then sadly injuries did happen. And when you look at him over the last couple of years, during the COVID shortened season, he had played in 21 of 56 games. Then two seasons, three seasons ago, 34 out of 82 games. Then last year, 67 out of 82. Then this year, 42 out of 53. So although I think he might be better than the two guys that I have ahead of him in this redraft, the fact that he has just not been able to stay healthy and not be able to stay healthy at such a young age, those seasons I listed was him between the ages of like 23 and 27. I'm afraid that his body might end up breaking down towards the end. So I still got to have him high in this redraft because when he is healthy, he is a top 25 player the league and he did have a pretty immediate impact but I am very concerned about his injuries going forward I hope I'm wrong but when you look at that track record that I just laid out he's probably going to miss at least 15 games for back-to-back -back years and then the prior years and only played like a third of the season so right now I gotta have Jack Eichel at number six but the New Jersey Devils would get their future franchise two-way center two years before they got Nico Heischer four years before they got Jack Hughes they wouldn't be too mad in taking a Jack Eichel at number five the Flames initially went with Noah Hannafin. I have them going with Krill Kaprizov. Now, when looking at him versus Eichel, Eichel definitely had a more immediate impact in the NHL. Kaprizov has been more healthy in his career, and I think over the last three seasons has been better than a Jack Eichel. When looking at Krill Kaprizov, what he did two years ago, 47 goals, 61 assists, 108 points. Even last year, 40 goals, 35 assists for 75 points in 67 games. So when looking at that, I think Kirill Kaprizov going forward is going to be the better player than a Jack Eichel. So considering they are still pretty young, I'm going to roll out with Jack with Kirill Kaprizov at this number five spot over a Jack Eichel. At number four, initially, obviously, Mitch Marner, he went here to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I have them taking Sebastian Ajo. Sebastian Ajo walked into the Carolina organization at 19 years old a year after he got drafted, he didn't initially make the jump, but uh, draft year plus two, made it to the Carolina Hurricanes. As a second round pick, he made the team in his D plus two, and he had a solid 49 goal, 49, 49 points, 25 goals, 24 assists for the Car Carolina Hurricanes. And then basically two years later, he was around 35-ish goals, 45-ish assists, point per game, great two-way player, and that is basically what he's been the past couple years leading up to this year where he's playing even better, especially offensively, 57 points and 49 games leading Carolina safely to a playoff spot yet again. And with the Toronto Maple Leafs, although they eventually would get Austin Matthews, 
you could play two center deep. Obviously, we've seen that strategy work a shit ton in the NHL. And them taking Sebastian Ajo probably leads to them not paying John Tavares a seven-year, $11 million contract. So I go Sebastian Ajo here over Kaprizov, although I think Kaprizov has more offensive potential. Obviously, the track record is better for Ajo. And like a Jack Eichel, they have the track record, but Ajo doesn't have the injury concerns. So that's kind of how I ended up with Sebastian Ajo at number four. At number three, initially, Dylan Schroem went to the Arizona Coyotes. I have Mitch Marner going to the Arizona Coyotes. Mitch Marner, by his third season, was a 90-point stud two-way guy, and that's basically what he was is for the past three or four years. This year is kind of a a down year coming off a season where he had 99 points and was a Selkie finalist. One of the best, smartest two-way wingers in hockey. He's having a bit of a a down year, 57 points in 50 games. That being his down year is still very impressive. He's been a consensus top 20 player basically since around 2019, 2020. So when looking at the Arizona Coyotes at that stage, they didn't have a much, they don't, they didn't have a lot cooking in general. So they just go with the best player available. And I think by a decent market, margin there's a decent gap between third and fourth overall Marner to Ajo based on the track records maybe not right now but Marner was far more elite at a younger age so I think they go with the Mitch Marner at number two you probably know who it is by now but the Sabres initially took Jack Eichel I have them taking Miko Rantanen. By his second season in the NHL, when he was only 20 or 21 years old, he had 84 points in 81 games. Then the next season, I feel like I've I've talked about this a decent amount. People forget when Miko Rantanen was leading the entire NHL to start the season, the first, more than the first half of the season, he had 73 points in 48 games. People were like, this dude might be better than Nathan McKinnon at this point. Obviously, he slowed down that season, finished with 87 points in 74 games. But last year, basically since then, he's been an elite top 20 player. Last year, best goal scoring year, 55 goals, 50 assists, 105 points. This year, 29 goals, 40 assists for 69 points in 54 games, which is on pace for 44 goals, 61 assists, and 105 points, which would match his point total last year, but just a little bit goal, a little bit less in terms of goal production. So I just think he's such a fantastic power forward. It's not just him benefiting off Nathan McKinnon. You look at him last year when Nathan McKinnon missed, I think, 11 games. He scored nine goals in those 11 games. He can carry a team on his own. So although he definitely benefits from playing with Nathan McKinnon, I think he could be a franchise player on a Buffalo Sabres. Him and Sam Reinhart. Sam Reinhart would probably actually be a solid develop more so into a center than the winger that he ended up developing into. So when looking at that, I think Buffalo takes Nathan McK- takes Miko Rantanen over a Mitch Marner in this redraft considering they both got well, Rantanen was actually better comparatively in their second season. Rantanen was better, but then beyond that, they were at the same level. And now this year, Rantanen is yet again playing better than a Mitch Marner. So I think Rantanen gets the nod over Mitch Marner. And at first overall, to no one's surprise, Connor McDavid still goes first overall. The most talented player of all time, 927 points in 616 games. Last year, obviously 153 points. The greatest skater that I have ever seen in my entire life in terms of the full package, maybe not just straight line speed, but like he just makes so many plays on a nightly basis that wow you. And this year, having a down year, 77 points in 47 games, which puts him on pace for 134 points. Just such a special player and the best player in the league. I don't care about how well Nathan McKinnon and Nikita Kucherov are playing. It is still Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers take him every day of the week. So this is the final. Goes McDavid, Rantanen, Marner, Aho, Kaprizov, Eichel, Connor, Barzell, Hintz, Wierenski. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about it? Who would you move up? Who would you move down? Who would you swap out? Who would you put in? And I'll be seeing the next one.